Hi, this is QA Shahin, and today we are going to start looking at using the page object model for WebDriver.js. This is a topic that has been requested a number of times for this WebDriver.js video. I've been sent some private messages, um, some comments with some videos, and we are finally going to start looking at page objects. The agenda for this video is that we are going to look at what the page object pattern is. So we're going to talk about it generally. And then we're going to actually start looking at implementing the page object. Now the page object can be seen as something that is a little bit complex to understand and implement. So to try and break down the complexity, this page object video will most likely be broken down into a number of parts. Uh, let's see how we get on. So what is a page object or what is the page object pattern? Before we talk about the page object pattern, let's really quickly talk about what a page is. Now, okay, let's take a break. This is a given. We know what a page is in a web application or a website. A page is simply something that looks um, like static or dynamic context, is consistent of text, is consistent of images, so on. Basically, all of the stuff you see here can be considered a page on the website. If I then say click on something else, so for instance, if I click on uh, my blog post for Agile, then we can assume that this is a different page. Now, like I said, pages consist of elements that we can interact with, which we effectively went through in much earlier videos in this WebDriver.js video series. But something we didn't really go into detail is the functionality of a page. So on a given page, yes, we can interact with elements, but what happens when, you, when I say click on a link? So if I click on, say, this image here, this takes me back to the recent post. So clicking on this is essentially some functionality that is attached to that specific page. For instance, if I'm on the recent posts page, then I can see there are a number of different links which go to different blog posts. But if I click on, say, one of these links, this then takes me to that blog post where those links are not visible anymore. Instead, I have different things on the page. So the idea is that when we talk about a page, from a page object model. The first thing to understand is the distinction of why you would want to do it. One of the first things to understand when we talk about page object is that we want to basically map a page and all the functionality of that page in our code. And the reason you would want to do this will become clear as we're writing page objects. But fundamentally, the reason why people write page objects is to A, increase the maintainability of your test, B, to make your test a little bit more readable, a little bit more easy to understand, and C, which is potentially the most important, which is to promote code reuse and to write clean code. So let's start looking at trying to write a page. Now, we're not going to write a page against my blog site. Instead, we're going to go down and we're going to try and write a page against my test web app site. So really quickly, this is a site that I built simply for you guys to go and try and write code against. Now, what is a page object? In the previous video, we wrote some CSS selectors to effectively navigate to the web app, click on the home link, and then click on the adoption link, and then get the text from a H1 heading. Now what we want to do is to start breaking all of this up so that in our test script, we don't write any of this driver.find element. Instead, what we want to do is be a little bit more expressive and say something like, go to the home page and then click on adoption. Follow that up by saying something like, when I'm on the adoption page, click on something else. The idea is that you start to map a page in a script. 
So let's begin by first of all creating a new script and giving it a sensible name. So I'm going to save this as home.js and I'm going to save it as a JavaScript file. Okay. So what do I want to do? Well, first of all, the first thing I want to do is actually lay down the foundations here, which would effectively create a page object model for me. In other words, set up the foundation so that I can use this to create a page object out of it. And to do this, we can start to use classes in JavaScript. Now, how do we write a class? To write a class, we simply say class, and then we give the class a name. So in this case, I'm going to say home page. And then we're just going to use these curly braces to represent the body of that class. Now, once this class is created, unlike other languages where you actually import in a class and then you create an instance of it, in JavaScript, it is a bit different. What you do is instead you export the class and when you then want to use that class in something else, say our test file, you simply import it in without having to create an instance for it. So let's go ahead and export this class. To export the home page class, all you do is you type in module.exports equal to new and then the name of your class, which in this case is home page. And this is literally it. This is all you really need to do in order to make this thing um, exportable and usable in some other script. So once we've done that, the first thing we want to do is actually to create a constructor. Now, what is a constructor? A constructor is something that is automatically executed when you create an instance of your class. And we create an instance of our class down here. So when we say new homepage, this method here will automatically run. So this is somewhere where we can use to create or run some code automatically for us. Now, if we go back here, the code that we will probably really want to use is this thing here, the var driver. So let's go ahead and copy that into our constructor. Now, another thing we'd like to do is to make this driver available to other methods, but we'll get to that in a second. For now, let's just keep it as it is. Now, because we are using driver and we are using web driver, we also need to import in the web driver. So we're going to go ahead and copy that in also. Okay. So something we want to do is actually navigate to the home page. And how can we do that? Well, first of all, let's actually write a method that's going to navigate to the test room. And in here, what we want to do is effectively repeat this line of code here. So this is basically saying driver.get and then it's going to that URL. So all I'm going to do now is copy that in. Now we can see an issue already. We will not be able to use this driver in here because the scope of this driver as defined by var is isolated to constructor. So we need to take out the driver. Now, the best way to do that is to simply move it outside of the class. And by doing this, we can now get rid of this var, and this driver now becomes reusable in other places. Okay, so what have we done here? So this is now looking to be the foundations of what looks like a class in JavaScript that is slowly representing our home page. Now let's try to use this in our test. Now before we try to use this in our test, let's go ahead and comment all of this stuff out. Now what we can do is try to actually use the home page. So something we can do is we can create a variable and let's call it home page. And what we're going to do is import in that home page by using require. And to do that, we can simply say dot, which is looking at the current directory, and then home. And I think that was it. Yep. 
Now the reason we're saying home is because we've called it home. And now if we say something like homepage dot navigate to the test room this should now start using the script that we've written here and what this should now do is when we start using the home page in our test.js file it should automatically create an instance of the driver and then when we make the call to this method it should navigate to the home page so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens and there you go it looks like when we ran the test it actually went to the test site and then it closed it because it had run its course so what have we covered in this video so this video was actually a very powerful video and by that I mean it has started to help us understand what a page object is and how to actually start writing one we looked at really quickly the foundations of building a simple page to allow us to interact with elements and then we went back to our test we commented out all of our existing code and instead we started to import in the home page script file and all we did was we used that one method we wrote to navigate to the testroom.com forward slash web app in the next video we will dive a little deeper into expanding the class homepage and seeing what more options we have to be able to use the page object pattern a little bit more. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I will see you in the next one.